Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof. Omar. Today we're going to talk about Putnam 2005 number A5. And it's a problem that involves this integral right over here. And the reason I want to bring this problem up is because it brings up an interesting technique for computing integrals that's not usually taught in classes. And the idea is to change an integral in a single variable to an integral in a double variable. And using that to exploit symmetries and such to be able to compute the integral at hand. So in this particular problem, what we're going to do is take the numerator, separate it out, and write it as an integral in another variable. And then we'll compute the double integral that comes as a consequence and find interesting ways to do that. Okay, so if you want, you can pause the video and actually try to write ln of x plus 1 as a double integral to start. We'll do that, and we'll pause the video again in a little while to take into account what we've done and try to actually give you time to compute the double integral. Okay, so um, let's compute or find a way to express this as an integral in a different variable. So 1 over some object is typically something whose integral is a natural logarithm. So we might be looking for a 1 over something. And you can think of this x as a constant with respect to the variable we're going to integrate against. So you can think about this as evaluating something like 1 over 1 plus xy from 0 to 1. Um, if we did that with respect to the variable y, we would get something like ln of 1 plus xy evaluated from 0 to 1, which itself is ln of 1 plus x minus ln of 1. Um, ln of 1 of 0, so we get the type of thing that we're looking for on the left-hand side. The only thing we have to be careful of here is that there's a, a chain rule going on. So we have to uh, actually multiply the numerator by x because the derivative of ln of 1 plus xy with respect to y, we're treating here x as a constant, is 1 over 1 plus xy times x. Okay, so there is a way to express the numerator of the original integral as an integral of a different variable. And so if we put that together then, our integral that we're interested in, which I'll call i, is then the integral from zero to one, of the integral from zero to one, of x over one plus xy times one over one plus x squared dy dx. All right, so now we've expressed our original integral as a double integral. And so the goal is to actually compute this. Okay, so the hint I'll give for trying this, if you want to try this on your own, is swap the variables and get a substitution, and then add what you have with what we have right here. Give that a try and see what you come up with. All right, um, so let's go ahead and do what we mentioned. So first of all, we're integrating over a square whose side lengths range over the same values. So we can interchange x and y here. And if we do so, we'll get the same integral. So we'll get here y over 1 plus xy times 1 plus 1 over 1 plus y squared dx dy, which is going to be the same as dy dx. OK, so if we add these two quantities, twice the integral in question, is the integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1, of the sum of these things. Okay, so if we take these pieces here, they look different than each other. And then we have this common 1 over 1 plus xy piece. So we'll have something like x plus 1 over x squared plus y over 1 plus y squared times the quantity 1 over 1 plus xy dx dy. All right. Okay, um, so this piece right here, we can find a common denominator. If we do, we'll get 1 plus x squared, 1 plus y squared, and then we'll get x plus xy squared as this piece here, and then a y plus x squared y. Okay, so the interesting part about this is that the numerator actually factors, and it factors into 
um, x plus y times 1 plus xy. And the reason that's interesting is we have this 1 plus xy right over here. So these two divide each other out. And so we get that twice the integral in question is the integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1, of the quantity x plus y over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus y squared dx dy. Okay, so there's something actually really interesting about this integral in particular and the way it's written. Um, so there's two pieces here. There's this x over this quantity and this y over this quantity. And if we separated this integral, double integral, into the sum of these two red blocks, they'd actually be the same value because we have symmetry in the denominator with x and y. And x and y themselves are ranging over the same squared. So if twice the integral is the integral of this sum, then one copy of the integral can be achieved by eliminating um, one of these sum ends. So we get something like x uh, over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus y squared dx dy. And now we're in a very interesting situation. To make room for space here, I'm going to erase what we had over here and continue writing the integral that we have here. The interesting part now is that we have this written as the product of two functions, uh, one in the variable x and one in the variable y, that are independent of each other. So we can write this as a product of two integrals in a single variable. The integral of x plus 1 over x squared dx and the integral of 1 over 1 plus y squared dy. And now we have two integrals that are manageable. The first one is the evaluation from 0 to 1 of a half of ln of 1 plus x squared. And the second one is the evaluation from 0 to 1 of arctan y. And this works out to be then um, 1 half ln of 2. We have an ln of 1, which is 0, as the other piece. And then here we'll have pi over 4 minus 0, so that's pi over 4. Which gives us the final answer of ln of 2 times pi over 8. All right. So an interesting way to go about this problem, there are a lot of different ways to actually compute this integral. Um, there are trig substitutions that work. You can use series if you like. Um, but I wanted to show this method in particular because it's not something that's talked about quite often. And again, the idea hinged on taking a piece of the function that you're given and writing it as an integral with respect to another variable so that you can actually move to writing your integral as a double integral and then using that together with symmetry to try to get something. Great, so a cool way to do this interesting integral and if you enjoyed today's video, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.